Hey Vince, I have a question for you. If we have an optical diffuser with a certain polar curve, which mounts at 1.75 meters above its working plane and about one meter away from its axis, how do you find the illuminance? All right, before, before we get to that, um, there's a few definitions that we need to go through and a couple of things that you need to be a little bit more aware of because of course there are quite a few different definitions um, within lighting. So we're first going to go through solid angle. So solid angle is, of course, the angle subtended by an area from a point source. And that is that particular area divided by um, the, the square of the distance from that point source. Um, we have radiant flux, which is the power from a source. Um, that is the entire power that comes from the entire electromagnetic spectrum from that source. We have the radiant intensity, which is the flux divided by the unit solid, ang solid angle. We have our luminous intensity, which is a little bit different to our radiant flux because it is a subsection of the entire EM spectrum. So that is just the visible light proportion of the spectrum. And then we have our luminous flux as well. So our luminous flux, and then we have our luminous intensity, which is also per unit sol solid angle. Um, we have luminous efficacy of our lighting, and that is the luminous flux divided by the power in um, required for that lighting. And then we have illuminance. So that is the lux that we will see on our surface. And then we have luminance as well, which is a slightly separate definition. That is what is radiating from our surface. So that's what you'll be perceiving from the surface. This is what is perceived by the surface. So to answer the question of what the illuminance is on this particular point, which is what we're asked, um, we have to first look at the luminaire that we have. So every single luminaire is different in terms of the luminous intensity that it will give out per angle around that particular luminaire. So for this particular luminaire, um, that's described by this polar curve. Um, this polar curve, again, will give you per angle out the particular luminous intensity, which is measured in candelas. Um, per angle. So our particular problem is dealing with um, a point that is 30 degrees or 1 meter and 1.75 meters high away from our point source. So that is approximately or roughly a luminous intensity of, what am I going to of 230. Okay, so what we're looking for is illuminance, which has the units of lumens per meter squared. And we have our luminous intensity as well. So in order to get from our luminous intensity to our illuminance, we need to first have our illuminance, which is in units of lumens per steradian. And then we need to multiply out by the solid angle that is subtended um, for this particular situation. So I'll generalize it for you. That would be our area, again, as we did before, right, which is in units of steradians. And then we need to divide by the particular area of interest that we're talking about. And that will achieve for us our units of, so if we multiply all of these together, lumens per meter squared, which is what we're looking for for our illuminance. So this particular All right, so this particular illuminance only describes, we're missing one particular thing, it only describes um, 
a point that is actually perpendicular from the viewing angle. So if you're actually viewing this point from 30, 30 degrees from that particular luminaire, you'll perceive this illuminance. But that's not the case for us. We're actually looking at the illuminance on a surface which has a different angle to one that is perpendicular to that viewing angle. So we need to go through and actually calculate now, um, well, I'll do a proof for you of our cosine law. Okay, so um, for the particular proof for our cosine law, it's relatively simple, and it's just trying to determine the same amount of energy that is spread over a larger surface area. So that is the situation where you don't actually have a surface that's perpendicular to your incident irradiation or your incident flux. So we have a certain illuminance here, and that's determined by the luminous flux that's given out by, say, for example, these lines represent um, solar energy. So you have luminous flux divided by a certain amount of area that we have here of interest. And then we have our luminous flux, or our illuminance, that's actually incident on a surface that's perpendicular to those particular lines. So that is also described by our luminous flux, but divided by the actual area that we have that's perpendicular to that surface. So we're going to substitute the illuminance of our perpendicular area into the illuminance of our area of interest. So we're going to rearrange this equation first and substitute it into this equation. So we'll end up getting right, and then we're going to look at our cosine law between our two areas. So we have the cos of the angle between them. Alright, so now we can actually substitute this particular equation back into this equation to determine the illuminance on our surface of interest as a proportion of the illuminance on the surface that is perpendicular to the incoming rays. Right. Okay, so in the previous proof I used beta, but we'll use theta here, so now we just have to put everything together that we've done in terms of finding our illuminance. So we know now our luminous intensity multiplied by our cosine factor to the theta, which is the angle between the normal to the surface of interest that we have, divided by our square relationship. So all you have to do is determine what theta is, and you can do that really simply by using the tan of the angle between and the distances that we've been given, which is All right, so figure out that angle, and now we substitute all of our values in. So we have 230 candela. Divided by our R value. and you'll receive, in the end, a value of 50 lux. All right, so that's how you determine the illuminance on a surface away from a luminaire. So, Alistair, could you show me how to calculate the shadow cast on a window? Sure, Vince, that's a good question. So, the question that's written up says we've got a one metre by one metre window, and we've got 
not to scale. We've got a shading device. We're looking straight at the window. We've got a shading device that's uh, 200 millimetres above the window and only as wide as the window. So that's our window and that's our shading device. Let's look at that side on. Here's our one metre window. Here's our 200 millimetre gap. And the depth of our shading device, what's our depth? It's 900 millimetres is what we're told. So that's the wall. That's the window. And that's the shading device there. Okay, great. Now, the other thing that we need to know when we're dealing with shading is where are we located. So in this question, the location is Perth. So the latitude, southern hemisphere minus 32 degrees south, and the longitude is 116 degrees east of GMT or east of Greenwich. So there we go, it's 3 p.m. on the 25th of August. So we use the solar tool to look up the altitude and it's 32 degrees. The azimuth is minus 48 degrees. Now that means that north, east, west, the sun in terms of azimuth, minus 48 degrees. So it's in that northwest quadrant. Now the other thing that we haven't mentioned yet is the orientation of the wall or the window. The orientation is facing west, so it's 270 degrees uh, orientation in that direction. Okay, so that sets up our problem. So because it's the afternoon, what we're thinking is that we will have this window now we're looking at it, I'm looking as if I'm in the west, facing west of the window, looking straight at the window. The sun will be northwest, so the shadow will look something, something like this. So we just get an idea, it's always a good idea to have an idea of where the shadow will be on the window. It'll look something like that. So what we want to calculate is that height and that width of the window, of the shade. Okay, so well, let's start to do some uh, calculations. So it's good to be able to do a sketch, but it's much better if we can put some numbers on the height of the shade and the width of the shade. Okay, so we better have a look. What's the formula that we need? We need a formula uh, when we're calculating these uh, dimensions. So from the, from the lecture notes, we know that the horizontal shadow angle will be equal to the azimuth minus the orientation. So our azimuth, we need to write this now down as, let's do this one first and get the horizontal shading angle. The azimuth needs to be written as with reference to zero degrees being to the north. This is 90 degrees azimuth, 180, 270. So we need the azimuth is 360 degrees minus 48, and the orientation is 270 degrees. So I think that then gives us a value of, we'll just do that intermediate step, 312 minus 270 degrees is 42 degrees. So that is the horizontal shadow angle which we'll need. Okay, the other angle that we need when we're calculating these 
shadows is the vertical shadow angle. And the equation for that, well, we always write this, usually we write this as the tan of that angle is going to be equal to the tan of the altitude divided by the cosine of the horizontal shading angle. So that's a nice simple equation, which of course will always be given to you if it's in an exam. Tan VSA will then be the tan of that altitude. Now what was our altitude? Our altitude was 32 degrees and the cosine of the horizontal shadow angle 42 degrees and so that then gives us a value of 0.841. Now we could work out that the VSA will be the inverse tan of 0.841, that's 40 degrees. But the good news is, is that we don't always need to work that out. We can just work out now a number of things. So let's work out first the dimension h, the height of our shadow, which will be given by the equation in the notes d times the tan of VSA. So then let's substitute in those values. The depth H is D. We need D is 0.9 of a meter multiplied by 0.841 and that then gives us a height of 0.76 of a meter. So there we go. So good, that's the height of our shadow and the width of our shadow is the next one we want to work out. That width is just going to be given by, from the notes, d times the tan of the horizontal shadow angle. So again, we work out 0.9 multiplied by, now we need the tan of 42 degrees, and that works out to be 0.81 of a meter. So, we go back to our original drawing, 0.81 of a meter, and the height is 0.76 of a meter. And there's the dimension of our shade.